In this tutorial, I'll show you how to uh, load up a simple character rig and um, set some poses for it and to keyframe it as well. Uh, so, look, first of all, I'm going to go File, Open Scene, and I'll load up um, Earl. So, we'll load him up and continue. And so, this is a basic, well, a very basic character rig, um, and it's pretty much got everything in here uh, so you can select and pose and animate this character. Now what you'll find when you first load this up, there's only certain things you can select in here. So you can't actually select the character model. Um, that's because certain things are set on display layers over here. So this is the channel box layer editor over here. And you can see you've got these tabs here um, that give you the attribute editor, the modeling toolkit, and also the channel box layer editor. And they correspond to these icons up here. So if ever any of these disappear, play about with these icons and they relate to different things. So look, this is the icon for the channel box layer editor. You can see the tabs disappeared. If I turn all of these off, you'll have nothing on that right hand side of your screen. So that I can turn these back on again. Um, so oh, that's the um, tool settings over there. I'll turn that back off. So you can muck about with these and, and bring up different things over on that right side. So at the bottom of the channel box is the display layer. And you can see you've also got animation layers as well, but we'll look at that later on. Um, and over here you have uh, visibility here and you have playback. Um, so whether it's visible when you um, play back animation, it's just for optimizing. And also there's a series of three um, settings here. You've got template, which turns things to gray and makes them unselectable. Uh, you have reference, which means you can see it, but you can't pick it. And then you have blank, which means you can select it. So at the moment, Earl Mesh is set to visible, playback visible, and but set to reference so that I can't pick it. So if I just select this, um, to blank that I can now pick his mesh if I wanted to edit that. Um, display layers are really good. They just mean that you don't accidentally keep selecting things when you're working on a busy scene. So I'll set the mesh back to R because we do not want to be keying that. Okay, this has got a skeleton underneath this and that's what we're going to be playing about with, but using the actual controllers, these circles of controllers here. Okay, now we can move these about. So if I drag a selection box around the main root controller you can see it comes up in the channel box here i can press w to bring up my move tool and i can now move Earl about i can scale him if i want to like so um, and that's the main sort of um kind of positioning scaling controller um, i don't ever animate this this is just to position position him in a scene and then i can start animating Okay, this is his main sort of um, waist controller. This is the one we'd animate for him to walk off like this. So you can see if we use this controller, his feet remain pinned to the floor. So it makes it easier to do walks and for him to sort of shift his balance about and stuff like that without him dragging his feet about. Um, if you pull them out of range, you can see his feet do pull away from those feet controllers. Um, but it's like they're on elastic. Okay, so the thing to do. Um, from this tutorial is just to have a play about. The best way to learn 3D is to play about. You'll muck things up, you'll break things, especially with rigs, you'll accidentally delete bits of the rig and you'll learn about it. Um, but have a play about with this. So look, to, to put him into say a generic stance pose, I might pull his arms down so that I pick the hand controllers. I'll just move those down to his side, I'll rotate them. I'm just using the W, E, R keys. Well, not the R key, that's scale, but the W and the E, e key, um, W's move and E is rotate. Okay, so I'm just moving those down into a, a kind of relaxed position like so and I'll do the same for that hand like so. And I'm just doing this very quickly. Um, what I'd recommend, and this is something we're, we're talking about in class, is you, you create reference for this. You stand up, you act out what you want the poses to be and so on. Now another thing you can do, you can see at the moment my transform manipulator, this thing, is corresponding to what is the local axis of this object. And I don't want this to get too complicated, but every single object in 3D in Maya has a local axis and you can set where that is. So at the moment, when I pick this object, you can see this manipulator tool appears here because that's where I put it. Okay, so sometimes you'll pick other objects and the axis might be in the center of the object. If an object's gone a little, little bit wrong, it might be over here. And sometimes people deliberately put axes um, offset from the object if they want it to rotate from a, a point away from the object. Okay, now you can see this axis is sort of corresponding to um, the kind of direction of this object. It's set to what's called local axis. Um, and if I double click here, 
you can see here the axis orientation is set to object. I can set this to world, component, and lots of things. Most of the time you switch between object and world. Okay, if I set it to world, you'll see it correlates kind of to um, the kind of XYZ planes in Maya's grid reference here. Um, and when I'm animating, I kind of swap between the two. Um, there's lots of different ways to swap between them. You can do it, I think, from the modeling toolkit. I think, yeah, look here, it's got the, the world and object settings here. So you can do it from here as well um, if you've got the modeling toolkit open. And there's other places to do it. But also you can double click on the move tool and you can set the axis orientation in there. Again, it's one of these things, play about a bit until you fully understand what it does. When I learned 3D, um, I was bombarded with all this kind of information. The best way to do it is, is just have a play about with something until you get your head around it and go, yeah, I understand that. Like I said, you don't have to play about with a lot of these. Just muck about with object and world to start off with. They're the two main ones um, to worry about um, at the start. I'm going to set it back to, um, to world and I'm going to just click on this icon to get rid of the tool settings to free up my screen. Um, so I'm going to pose him about a little bit. Um, I'll just move him down. I'll put a little bit of kind of um, a symmetry into his pose. It doesn't matter if things intersect a little bit. Um, it gives them a, a feel of sort of squishy volume kind of thing. Like you can see his arms intersecting a little bit like that. But with a low poly model like this, you sometimes need that little bit of intersection to give it a sort of almost a fleshy feel that clothes are giving a little bit and um, you know, when things are pushed up against them. Um, so look, I'm just going to set his pose a little bit, move his feet about a bit, and so on. So you can play about with these. Look, these are the feet controllers. Then in front of these, look, we've got these, these knee controllers as well. So we can muck about with the knees as well. Okay. Um, back here, these are elbow controllers. Okay. Like so. And then we've got the head controllers here like so. So you can set everything up and we just play about setting up some poses. He's even got a moustache controller, look like so. So it's all good fun. And then there's a hat controller as well. Look, we can take his hat off and move it about and so on. Okay, so they're the main controllers here, those circles. And if you've got your display layer set up right, they should be the only things you're picking in the scene. So it just makes it a little bit easier um, to select those things. OK, so that is the absolute basics of selecting things. I'm sure I've missed things out, but I'll try and cover those kind of things in class as well. But this will just give you an extra bit of support. This video tutorial will give you extra bit of support when you're, you're playing about with these um, in your sort of self-study time. OK.